So Alex, when I walked into the studio, yeah, you was you was playing some music. I haven't really had a chance to really to dive into anything. Same. So this I is know very fresh for us. A, a ton that you you've been catching me up on. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came in, I heard a vibe, a new a new vibe from Drake. And I was like, what is this? Right? It's the right. middle of the work week. Right. It's a Tuesday afternoon, the time we're recording this, the time that this news dropped. Right. And Drake apparently has a Finsta and yeah. he dropped some new songs and he just won't go away. <laughs> right? I saw all of this happening and I'm thinking to myself, all right, everything that he has done since the Kendrick Lamar beef situation, whatever, like we hear Lil Yachty saying he was unfazed. We hear Lil Yachty kind of talking for Drake. Um, we see Drake acting unbothered, whatever the case may be. Everything that he's done since the Kendrick Lamar uh, battle beef, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. One, in my opinion, he's proven Kendrick Lamar right about everything he said about him outside of the pedophile stuff. I'm not speaking to the pedophile mm -hmm. shit. He hasn't done anything to show that he's a pedophile, right? So right. let me not put that on, on him. him. Right. But every other way that he has moved after this beat, mm -hmm. he is done. He ran and did the the song with a pop star, Camila mm -hmm. Cabela. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing he did. Yeah. Um. A, He's we, also been accused of being isolated, right? We're not seeing him with his usual peers or features. Mm -hmm. Now he's aligning himself with Party Next Door even more. Like the timing of their collab project announcement is very odd to me mm -hmm. because why wouldn't you do this years ago? Mm -hmm. It's almost like when I see him not working with Lil Wayne all of a sudden and now it's Wayne this, Wayne that. It's like, no, when you was hot as fuck and didn't need anybody, right. You wasn't standing next to Lil Wayne the way that I always felt he should have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now that you're on this island by yourself and OVO got called out and mm -hmm. everybody's like, yo, where's the party album or what's going on with party? Now I see you aligning yourself with party. So everything moment. that he's doing since, Kendrick Lamar either predicted, told us, and he's just proven it true. And it just shows me how mm -hmm. out of touch he and his team seems to be. Because That's everybody knows you should have just went away. Yeah. yeah. And to your point, like we've always loved music between him and party. Why is it now that you're actually taking it serious and you actually want to be like, you know what, let's actually tune it. Let's do the album. Now, to say to your point now, they announced this joint project is supposed to release in the fall. So we'll wait for that. But to say to say Vaughn's point, when he walked in, I was playing a little vibe, and I do want to give y'all some of that. This one is called Blue Green Red. Uh he released this on his new Finsta page hey. called Plot Twist. Hey. What? What am I now? Now, I'm only playing you some of that because that was the song I liked out of the three pack. Uh, Drake put out 100 gigs, all right? 100 gigs is a collection of videos and like three snippets. songs. Yeah, snippets Random from over the years. Random clips from his, his days. His days over probably like the last decade or so, yeah. right? Like Drake has braids now and some of these videos, he has a dark season, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> no, it's true. That's how I knew it was old though. I thought, mm -hmm. I thought I he just- I remember when he looked like that. That's crazy. <laughs> when he had the heart and everything in his head. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That era. <laughs> that era. Um, yeah, it's a bunch of unreleased things throughout his career. And I don't know, it's funny. When I when I first saw that 100 gigs was just 100 gigs worth of all of that stuff, Yeah, I remember getting like um, reflective, introspective Drake where he would actually talk about those moments that he showcased to us on a file through the music, mm -hmm. right? Like he'd hop on a Sandra's Rose and speak about so-and-so that he met when he was on tour in 08 or he'll hop on one of the timestamp records, right? And he'll get super introspective about how life has changed for him and things of that nature. So I feel I found it so interesting to see that he's showing us that version of introspection now through like Is he? Or I is mean, it marketing? I mean marketing for for what though, per se, right? Because I'll say this, right? We know Kendrick has an album on the way, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This three pack he put out in the collection of hundreds of gigs or whatever, it's not gonna compete with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this three songs is not enough to compete with whatever Kendrick has on the way. That's but we don't we don't yeah. we don't have a release date from Kendrick. We don't. We don't have a single, right? We, don't. we yeah. got not like us, but who yeah. knows if that's even gonna be on the album. Right. So we don't know much about Kendrick's situation. Yeah. Right. So I don't even know if I can equate the two to kind of match in that sense. Um, unfortunately, they're always gonna be comparable. Now. So why do you See? know that but Drake doesn't? <laughs> And when I say that, it's because it's question. he moves as if he doesn't, he's not aware of that. And then it made me really think about some of the things that Kendrick was saying. Like, 
Oh, you was listening to Kendrick this time. Yeah, I listen to Kendrick. He was saying I, some shit. I was shit. Kendrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen this time around. <laughs> yeah, he Smack some sense into me. Like, <laughs> God damn, nigga, relax. But no, it's just everything. Like, I'm I'm struggling. So yeah. LL Cool J, right. um, he's been going around talking about his uh, Mount Rushmore for Def Jam. Yep. Right? Uh, dope interview. Shout out to LL Cool J. Shout out to you, too. I know oh, yeah. you went to his listening party. Just went party to his week. listening party this past week. Ran into Elliot Wilson. Elliot, what up? Shout out to Elliot, yeah, he, was, he was a moderator for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, and, and hearing people give that list and talk about the greatest rappers and all this other stuff, like, it forces me to think about Drake's placement in the greatest of all time, rappers and rap artists and all this other shit. Yeah. But the way that he's moved and the way that Kendrick read him and everything that he's proving Kendrick to be true, it's like, I don't, mm -hmm. he's not, I don't know if he's a rapper. Right? Hey. Yes. I, I don't know if he's like a rapper. I think he's an artist and I think he's been able to navigate, but like you're so exposed. You've been so exposed, right? And you didn't change your pivot. Like you didn't play any type of defense. You think offense, offense, offense. And him doing this to me is another sign of just offense, offense. I'm going to drop. Or, or trying to get I'm a, a filler. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to do something, trying to get anything. A yeah. But it's never, it's not in the essence of what it is to be an MC in that way. Like the MCs that we know, the rappers that we know, what we expect from people who just came out of the biggest rap battle ever mm -hmm. to just move in this direction, to do the leak with Lil Yachty and just the way that he moves, it just doesn't give like, I'm a rap, like I'm him. Like yeah. he's not, this is not very hip hop of him. It's, I guess so, but I'm not like the hip hop barometer guy, yeah. but I know I grew up in this culture and I know what it is to see like competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you thought this was going to be a Meek Mill situation again with Kendrick. Mm -hmm. That's what I think he really thought. I think he was going to get the jokes yeah, off. Yeah. He was going to clown them. He was going to make the memes. And unfortunately, a lot of people was rooting for Meek Mill, but Meek Mill couldn't really pull him into the deep end of like, nah, nigga, this is real hip hop. Let's, right. let's, let's swim in this pool over here. Right? Like <laughs> yeah. Meek Mill didn't have that capability to do that mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. where Kendrick did and mm -hmm. he pulled him into the deep end. Like he went there, yeah. And Drake is like, nah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just doing this for the likes and I'm right. just doing mm -hmm. this for the image and the jokes. Like he thought it was going to be a Meek Mill part two mm -hmm. and it's not that. And now you're not even shifting the narrative in a way that you're responding to what happened to you. Right. Like when Kendrick said, yo, stop saying nigga. And then Drake came back with this song. Nigga, I said it. Since the beef has concluded, I haven't really heard Drake rap. Mm -hmm. I know he told, he 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 uh, promised us summer vibes on the way. I heard him on Gordo's album. That's a house album. Um, I heard him on the, actually Sexy, Sexy Red. Red. Yeah. He rapped on that. And I was kind of like in and out, right? Like, but he wasn't talking really about stick. anything serious. He wasn't really talking about anything. That's why I was talking about the introspection, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how, how did he age in reverse with, with music? Isn't that kind of crazy? What do you mean? Like, again, on those albums, like... Oh, like in the beginning, he was super deep and introspective, and then now he's not doing any he, of that? He knew how to blend all the introspective shit with just fun vibes. And we loved it. And we he was relatable. It. He knew how to relate. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe he lost his ability to relate because we see how successful he is. And that's one of the downfalls of success, right? He's a victim of his own success in certain degrees. And that's probably why we feel like he can't get as introspective because his introspection is things that 99% of us can't relate to. Right. So maybe that's why he lost changed. it. Maybe that's why he lost his superpower. But I'm just speaking from like a rap standpoint, from a rapper, from an MC standpoint. Like, yeah. again, we said this at the top of the podcast, growing up in New York, you're exposed to so many different things, so many different cultures. Like, I had no choice but to grow up on the locks. I had no choice but to grow up on 50 Cent and see some of the things like, we really I understand what it is to be a competitor in that field yeah. for, from a fan perspective obviously I'm not a fucking rapper yeah. so I can't talk to it from there but it's just like everything you're doing just is against what my faves would do like a Styles P never in my life never in his life a DMX right some of the people who even have criticized him in the past DMX was a huge critic of Drake at some point yeah. because he just smelled. Nah, so I'm off with him. Something's <laughs> off with him. He's cosplaying you know, as a rapper. You know DMX smelled it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I just yeah. thought it was real interesting just seeing how he's taking this approach after. Again, his music is undeniable. Yeah, and so I don't think artist. it's the, the the conversation of music at this point. Yeah, you're not saying he makes bad no, music. No, it's never about the music when no. it comes to him. Like That's what he does. Uh -huh. But now... After the rap battle, it's time for me personally to just be like, oh, he's just a music maker. He's yeah. not a rapper. Like, mm -hmm. I can't put him in the top five, top ten mm -hmm. rappers anymore because of what I believe that to actually be. 